Yo guys, what's up? Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about, of course, this Doors book that I mentioned in one of my last videos um, on the Ed Sullivan drum performance I did. Um, I wanted to do a separate video series where I'm going to talk about some of the Doors books I got and some of the photos. Um, I'll try to keep this kind of short. Uh, we're just going to show the early 67 Doors stuff, 66. 65. So 65 to 67 um, Doors photos for this video. I'm trying to keep these series of videos and whatever I talk about in the video organized. I don't want to digress too much like I'm doing now. <laughs> so anyway, I went to start with this book. This is a, I got this book I think when I was like 14 not that you really care but I just like to think where I was when I got it and I remember I was in I was in like high school or middle school and I had to get it and I, this was my first time I remember seeing these photos and was like whoa it's really cool so this is a cool book it's called the illustrated history of the doors if you're a doors fan which you probably are if you found yourself on this video I apologize if it's re repetitive information but this is my take on it. It was released, I believe, in September 1983. And yeah, we'll just start out uh, showing some pictures and um, introduce everybody. There you go. Chapter one, The Doors, January 1967. Um, speaking of January 1967, uh, if you go on my channel, you'll see me do a uh, quick little performance of The Doors playing Break On Through on the TV channel or TV show called She Bang, which I don't know much about. If you go to, on my channel, go on my playlist, and you'll see Break On Through. It's the studio version. They're mimicking uh, and lip syncing to the studio version, but apparently... Uh, that was their first performance on national TV, which I guess was kind of, kind of, kind of like an Ed Sullivan kind of show. I don't know much about the show or the host, um, but apparently that was their first performance on TV. And from the dates I've read from the research, uh, there's there's some discrepancy. It's not totally exact, but from what I found is that supposedly it was January. First, 1967 was just three days, um, three or four days before their debut album release, The Doors. So if we just move along here, that's pretty neat. I like how they introduce everybody. For example, there's Robbie here, and it's like an occupation um, introduction, which I think is pretty neat. So it gives you uh, their full name, birth date, and place, personal data, height, um, how much they weigh, color eyes, color hair. It's pretty neat. I like how they did that. It's like a kind of opens up with like a identification or ID. Um, intro to the doors. Talks about TV shows they like. What, what do you see or what do you like? What do you look for in a girl? Soul. Robbie says, you know, stuff like that. So check it out. So there. And if you, you know, if you, it gives you a little information where they grew up and where they're from, what schools they attended, you know. There he goes. John here, John Densmore. And if you read these interviews, um, in the beginning, I notice. I think this is in their own words. For example, John Densmore writes a little uh, introduction about himself. But during the time, if you read this, it has to be during the time of The Doors. This was not an interview. It doesn't seem like an interview that was after The Doors because, for example, if you read John Densmore's part, it says, I've been playing for six years. Obviously, so that had to have been sometime. This interview 
of his height, his weight, color hair, all that, you know, all that information. It had to have been somewhere during the time of the doors because, again, if you read, um, if you continue to read, it will give you, there's, I think somewhere in there, I think for one of them, they mention their age um, somewhere. But anyway, so I thought that was pretty cool. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. And here's Ray. Try to keep this video kind of short. There's Jim Morrison. And if, well, here's a perfect example. Obviously, we know Jim Morrison's dead, so if you read this introduction here, which I'm not going to read, um, it was an interview that had to have been taken of him, something that he wrote down or interviewed for whatever, because this is supposedly in his own words when he introduced himself, which is pretty neat. Some famous pictures here is uh, Venice, Venice Canals, I believe it's in uh, somewhere in L.A. or San Francisco. Early photos, it might have been like 66, maybe, maybe uh, early 60s, maybe sometimes 67. Photo shoot, we know that one. Early, early days. Here they are on the beach. I've seen that. This might have been somewhere, I think this is called the Wharf or something in San Francisco. This, this photo. And then these photos, I was looking these photos up. These are very famous photos here. It's uh, the doors at the Whiskey Go-Go. Uh, they perform there, I believe, starting sometime in 66. And I believe they pl I believe they play there up until August of 67, um, which was their last performance at the Whiskey, Whiskey A Go-Go. I wish there was a bootleg out there. I can't seem to find one. Because it was just, that's so dated back so long ago. And it was even before that they kind of got big. These particular photos, uh, I've seen some discrepancies where it's not confirmed whether this photo, these photos here were taken in 66. Or if they were taken in May of 67 when they did some shows. It's kind of hard to tell, but I can tell you, which is pretty neat is if you look at John Densmore's kit back here, it looks like some kind of Black Oyster Pearl kit. Um, not sure if that's his kit, if it's a house kit, um, or if it's a Rogers kit or a Ludwig, but you can kind of see the rack tile up here. It looks like a 12 inch, and it looks like uh, a Black Oyster Pearl wrap on it. And I just, can't help noticing these monster Fender amps behind Jim. Not sure if he was singing through the Fender, one of the Fender amps, or if uh, Robbie was going through one. You see him there with his early SG. Which, uh, speaking of his SG, um, I saw in an interview Robbie said that his SG that he had, and I want to clear this up. He said that the SG that he had in the early days, like for the debut album, and uh, moving forward. But he said that his SG was a Gibson Melody Maker. But, now I could be wrong, but I think that is incorrect. And I, I saw, he said this in his own flesh and blood and bones that Robbie Krieger said in an interview. I forget where I saw the interview. I definitely saw it on YouTube. But he said that his SG was a Gibson Melody Maker SG. Well, if you look up a Gibson Melody Maker SG, it's not the one that's in these photos. It's it's a little bit different. It's different. Um, the pickups are a little more like single coils, like on a Strat. Um, I think some Melody Makers only had one tone or one volume. Some of the configurations of the pickup 
of the pickups and the uh, and the knobs or the pots on the guitar are different. So I think that's an error on Robbie's part. Look at me correcting Robbie. Like, who's this guy? I know. But because I'm that nerdy, I noticed it and I've read it. He said he had a Gibson SG Melly maker, which is the one that was stolen. But I think that's a discrepancy on Robbie's part. And it's actually a Gibson SG Special, uh, which I believe is like a, the one he had was like a 64. So I just wanted to clear that up. So if you read my description, I talk about it. Uh, so, you know, again, check the description out for these videos. But yeah, so it's like either 66 or May 67 at the Whiskey A Go Go. Um, and also the Whiskey A Go Go, I believe. Um, and there are photos of it, which I'll show you in another book I have. Um, Jim Morrison did, or should I say Van Morrison, jammed with the doors. So it's funny to see pictures of Van Morrison and Jim Morrison. No relation. I don't think so. I haven't came across that yet. I don't know. I, I haven't got the DNA test back yet. <laughs> but uh, there are photos of Van Morrison and Jim Morrison uh, jammed with doors. And we're going to move along here. I think these photos are also taken at the, the Venice uh, Canals, somewhere in San Francisco. And then this photo over here... Um, this photo over here is, I love this photo by the way, that background, that psychedelic background. I'm not sure where this photo was taken. From what I've read, it's somewhere apparently maybe in 66 or 67. Now, the Matrix album here that I have, when you open up the sleeve, this photo or some photo from this particular show is inside the sleeve of the Matrix. So I always used to think that this was taken at the Matrix Theater, but after research and over the past couple years, um, I found out that I don't, or my theory is starting to change, and I don't think this was taken at the Matrix. Um, with a lot of Doors live albums, I notice uh, that the label or the record company or whoever uh, is the one being responsible putting the photos inside these live albums and the bootlegs. They're generally not, the photos inside the album artwork is generally not applicable to the audio that you're hearing. So if you're listening to the Matrix album and you open up and you see this photo, you're going to think that's the Matrix. I don't think that's the Matrix theater. I'm not sure. I can't find, everywhere I've looked, I cannot find a date or a time um, or a venue, any kind of record where this photo was taken. But if you look at um, Rob, or John Densmore, he's playing a Rogers kit. And it looks like it has two toms on the bass drum, a floor tom, and two or three cymbals. It's kind of hard to see because it's, it's dark. It's inside like a club. Uh, at one point I thought maybe this was the Phil Maurice, because I do know, or I'm sorry, the Phil Maurice. Well, Fillmore East or maybe Fillmore West, possibly. They did do some shows in 67 at the Fillmore. I think at the Fillmore West or, or both, I think, at one point in 67. But I'm not totally sure. So, uh, back to what I was saying is that I don't think this is the Matrix show at all. And I mentioned in my Matrix videos for the drums that... Possibly, in my description I put possibly, uh, John Densmore was playing a Rogers kit. That, that don't hold me accountable to that. Don't quote me on that. Because we only have photos to make a theory. So I'm not totally sure where that photo was taken. But I don't think that's the Matrix theater. But it's just a theory. It's just up there in the air to think about. For you Doors, Doors fans, of course. Uh, I forget where this photo was taken. But it was taken at some kind of caves, in a famous cave somewhere in L.A. Uh, apparently a lot of movies were shot here. So I guess the doors were hanging out, taking a photo shoot sometime in 66 or 67. I think it's called, like, starts with a B. Bron Bronson Caves or Bronston Caves or something. Somewhere in uh, um, either Los Angeles or San Francisco. 
66 or 67, that photo. And then there's more photos early. Sorry if you can't see these photos. Early uh, debut album shoot. There's another early debut album shoot of Jim right there on the side. Where he's wearing that kind of, um, kind of like suit jacket coat. There's uh, Jim and uh, Pamela Corson, if I'm saying that correctly. It's probably 66 or 67. Uh, throughout the book, too, if you if you um, do the reading, all these little uh, articles were are different authors uh, from, uh, for example, New York Magazine. Richard Goldstein he writes a little piece, and all I guess all these people that were journalists or who had some kind of interaction with the Doors. There's something by Paul Williams. Uh, Rock is Dead, a discussion of a Doors song, Crawl Daddy, Crawl Daddy, What Goes On. I guess these are like different um, form of uh, journals or newspaper articles, and these different artists write about um, a little blog about the Doors or their experience in meeting with them, which is pretty neat. Los Angeles Times, vibrant jazz rock group at Gazzari's. So there's little articles. And what I don't like about this book is that um, some of the photos I wish they told you. Now the other Doors book I have does. But they don't tell, there's no like little side blog of telling you where the photos were taken. Which I don't like. But I had to kind of memorize some of these before I did the video. And then moving along. I think this photo was taken again all these photos are six, either 66 and or 67 I believe this was taken uh, at one of those docks in San Francisco a boat dock or Venice Canal a lot of these pictures that's where they were taken somewhere on some kind of bay or something like that Again, this one here on your uh, on your left, some kind of bay, and then here's the famous billboard photo uh, when they're advertising, promoting their debut album on a billboard, which you know you've seen uh, on my channel and you know just in general. The famous billboard shot of the debut album, which uh, is where a lot, not just the Doors, but a lot of bands and rec record labels uh, over in on the west coast like Electra where they would advertise a band's new album on a billboard you know like above a highway you know when you're driving over a bridge or something but it would be um, usually on Sunset Strip which uh, somewhere in LA or San Francisco where the rock scene the rock hippie scene was growing there you go great picture there Break on through with an electrifying album, The Doors. Ladies and gentlemen, from Los Angeles, California, The Doors. Dan, 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 dan. Getting off topic. We'll get to that eventually. I think that's the New York show sometime in maybe 70. But whatever. We'll get to that later stuff. Let's see where we leave off here. I'm not sure where this photo was taken. I definitely had a show, obviously. Could have been the Fillmore, uh, could have been um, one of those high school shows they played at high schools. There's some more. And then this photo up top here, where it uh, looks like they got some kind of, you know, award for hit single or whatever. I'm going to be really nerdy, and I pulled it up on my phone. And do, 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 do. I just had it.
All right, well, I don't want to get too off topic here, but I believe it was taken in July of 67 um, for a, their hit single, Like My Fire. They got an award. It was in, like, the top, I don't know. It's one of the hottest songs at the time, one of those top pop songs or something at the time. So they got, like, an official uh, award, which there's a lot of photos of that, different bands. You see the Beatles holding the, the, the gold vinyls and stuff platinum silver record something like that one of those events and then that brings us up to here uh, which, which again I've talked about before on my Ed Sullivan videos we started looking at these photos these are the uh, Joel Brodsky photos Joel Brodsky was a Electra I think he worked for Electra Records he was a photographer not just for the doors I imagine he did it for a lot of rock stars and movie stars takes the uh, the famous young lying photo which we've all seen so I don't want there. then we're getting up here to November 67 strange days strange days was just released I believe September 25th 1967 the famous Joel Bronski photo this is also around the time, I believe the photos, these photos were taken in New York in September 67, which I mentioned. Um, let's see here. Let yeah, me show this again. These are the, these are just some of the outtakes. I love how they did that in this book. And again, uh, like I said, all these little blogs here are all different authors and articles taken, I guess, from like Melody Maker, uh, LA Times Magazine, or newspapers, or stuff like that, and they took these blogs out. Uh, I just wish they put a little, you know, a little summarize of where the photo was taken, or what year, or venue, or whatever. It's the only thing I don't like about the book, but... I, I think I'm going to stop there because I don't want to get too off topic. So that pretty much summarizes where we are with the doors on my channel. So here it is, the 1983, the Illustrated History of the Doors, released sometime in, again, September uh, 1983. There's a, another outtake picture from the early days. And speaking of the Young Lion photo... Um, just to clarify this. Actually, you know what? I won't even talk about it. Just read my description. Check my description out. I don't want to repeat myself too much. I want to end the video here. So thanks again for checking out the channel. Uh, Rockstars92. Uh, just go on the channel. Go on my playlist. The creative playlist. And I have a list of a bunch of videos for different projects I've worked on uh, in the past many years. And it's still in progress, of course. And I appreciate you guys checking out the videos. Um, again, this is just for entertainment, just celebrating, you know, classic rock stuff. And we'll end it on that. Young Line photo. Joel Brodsky. And again, check out the description for more information about uh, the photo sessions for The Doors in September 1967, around that time. So... Thanks again, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.